Hey guys, James here with Critical Hits, and having completed the F-Zero review and learned some editing skills, I've now put together, you guessed it, Mega Man X. So, another Super Nintendo game. I uh, don't really know when it was released. I think it was a launch title. Runs you about 50 bucks now. And um, I guess before we jump into it, first thing we're going to do, though, is uh, I'm just going to rebind dash to R. This is probably the most important thing if you want to enjoy this game. Uh, otherwise, you have to use some wacky controller holding bullshit. People call it the claw. Um, lots of, I think, speedrunners use it, but uh, I'm not a speedrunner. In fact, I'm not even good at the game. So, I guess in today's video, I'm going to go over some of just the basic gameplay stuff. But uh, we're going to try and get you to the upgraded blaster because that's going to make everything more fun. And, uh, yeah, just sort of talk about the backstory and why it's probably one of the greatest SNES titles. So, um, this was developed, I guess, uh, no, it's not Mega Man 10. I should probably clarify that. The X is not a Roman numeral. Uh, it's supposed to take uh, place in the future from all previous Mega Man games. Uh, it's actually it's its own Spiri spin-off. You're dealing with Dr. Kane, not uh, Dr. Light. Uh, in fact, Kane finds one of Light's robots, as you can kind of see from the backstory that's uh, in the recording right here. Um, it says approximately 30 years, uh, but the general idea here is they developed a whole bunch of robots, or reploids, uh, they had the ability to sort of have human emotions, but some of them became bad. They then created uh, an elite military task force of robots to fight the bad robots, called Reploids. Uh, or no, sorry, called Maverick Hunters. Uh, these Maverick Hunters, with Sigma at the head of them, uh, also turned evil. <laughs> Go figure, they didn't do anything different. And Mega Man X and Zero, so dude with the long hair. Uh, I thought it was a girl when we first got the game. Uh, are set out to defeat Sigma. Um, so, maybe to help you out if you aren't familiar with the game, which is, I assume you're watching this video, uh, there are four armor upgrades. Uh, so, these are your helmet upgrade, which lets you smash overhead blocks, your dash, which uh, it gets more interesting to watch as soon as I have it. <laughs> and uh, a blaster upgrade. And an armor upgrade, which just reduces the damage you take. In this video, in order to get the blaster upgrade, you need the dash and the helmet. So we'll be doing those first two stages, and then as soon as I have the blaster upgrade, I'll sort of leave it to you. The reason the blaster upgrade makes the game that much more fun is... Fuck these bees. I hate seeing bees evil. Bees are a noble creature. <laughs> um, the reason we're trying to get this blaster upgrade is you can then use sort of like a better form of each of the boss abilities. So if you get Chameleon Sting, you can actually charge it up and get like an invincibility, which makes the game a lot more fun. In terms of difficulty, I think some people criticize that this was a bit easier in terms of Mega Man games. Um, I would kind of agree that it's a bit easier. But I would say it's easier because of design decisions and sort of, uh, I guess, probably hardware capability. I noticed in a lot of the old Mega Mans, I'd get frustrated. If you leave the screen and you come back, uh, an enemy respawns. It's still that way in Mega Man, but the leaving the screen uh, isn't as unforgiving. Um, also, in case you're wondering, I'm just taking a whole bunch of damage here just to speed up the video. I'm going to have to fight Vile. You can't beat him. <laughs> so being at low health means that um, it'll go really quick. Um, I know lots of people on the internet have tried beating him. He is apparently completely invincible. There is no way to defeat him. He'll just stab me here. Oh no, what will I do? A worthless piece of scrap metal. Uh, so Vile here, the purple dude with the shoulder cannon. 
Um, you may notice he looks just like Boba Fett, <laughs> which is awesome. Um, I also think the, the makers of Mega Man probably had Star Wars in in mind. Uh, the second stage of Sigma, well, I guess the first stage of Stigma after Sigma after you fight his dog, uh, he like straight up busts out a lightsaber. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think definitely they were they were stealing a couple elements from there. That's good. Take the best from everything. He's a badass bounty hunter. Um, obviously Zero here. He's kind of a dick. He's like, I'll scout ahead because I'm obviously better than you. You might one day be as powerful as me. <laughs> but, um, yeah, other than his bullshit, he is kind of handy. He did just save my life. Uh, the code system in this game, which you just saw there for a second, um, not too bad. Uh, I think it's 16 characters. Uh, it gets really easy when you have a capture card. If you ever want to type in codes, you can just go back. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, there's like games out there on the original Nintendo and Super Nintendo that have like 40 character somethings. Uh, not really okay with that. Even if I don't have to write it down, I do have to type it in. Um, so, I guess if you're looking to get most everything, uh, I guess, spoiler alert in orders, but uh, you probably want to do Chill Penguin, just because the dash upgrade is necessary for everything. Um, I then like to do Storm Eagle, Flame Mammoth, Spark Mandrel, Armored Armadillo, Launch Octopus, Boomer Kawanger, and then Stink Chameleon is the very last. Um, you do have to backtrack a little bit that way. Um, I think you need to go back to Boomer Kawanger, obviously. I think you need his own tool at the top to get a heart uh, tank. Uh, you also have to backtrack to Chill Penguin, obviously, once you get the Flame Mammoth uh, to bust open the igloo. Um, you need to go back to Armored Armadillo. Actually, once you have everything, so I guess you also have to go back to Spark Mandrel to get the sub-tank with Boomer Clangers. But uh, then you can backtrack to Armored Armadillo, and there's like a way to get Hadouken. Uh, there's a lot of confusion on what's required for Hadouken. As far as I can tell, it is have all upgrades, so all hard tanks, all sub-tanks. Have stood on the ledge at the end of the Armored Armadillo level at least four times. So typically you just like farm a bunch of lives. Um, which is great on Armored Armadillo. There's a bat. It's like a weird black bat. It's like a throwback to old Mega Man games, I think, that drops like 50% chance to drop a life or something. Um, but you have to stand on this ledge at the end of the Armored Armadillo, and then you sort of just jump off, and then you ride down, you stand on the ledge, and then you jump off, and then you ride down, stand on the ledge. Um, and I think you might need full health when you stand on the ledge the final time to get the Hadouken, but I don't know. Um, I didn't actually know about it as a kid, only recently found out about it when I was replaying it. Um, I don't really care, the technique isn't that great. You can only use it when you're at full health, it seems. And while it will one-shot most things, it's... I don't know. Other than the cool Dr. Kane wearing a Ryu headband and belt. Um, so I did mention backtracking for Heart Tank, I just went by the area, you just dash back, there's a couple igloos, you can bust them open with uh, Flame Mammoth's fire. These fucking snowballs. Yeah, die snowball. Ugh, oh, gets me every time. Oh, that's nice. Get a man there. Uh, so, chill penguin. Um, this, this really sets the stage for all the bosses. They are fantastic. Um, I was not the biggest original Mega Man fan. I mean, I played a lot of 2, and I played a lot of 4, but um, this... The, the bosses, the levels, I mean, everything is so much better in this game. Uh, the graphics... Like, I'm, I mean, I'm not a big graphics guy, but... Uh, just like the the visual upgrades to it are incredible. 
And they didn't they didn't give anything up. The gameplay's still fun. Um still have a bit of memorization on boss attacks. Just wrecking this guy. Jump on me. Um I mean it was just a, a straight improvement in every way. And Seeing that this game is only $50, I would say it's well worth every penny if you even remotely liked any other Mega Man game ever. Um, I didn't play some of the 3D ones, I think, on GameCube, but I guess any 2D side-scrolling Mega Man. Uh, if you're like me, you're also excited about uh, Mighty No. 9 coming out, so Inafune, I believe it is. Um, he basically split from Capcom because they won't let him make the Mega Man game he wants and he's making Mega Man number nine. Some people are really upset about that too. I find it kind of ridiculous. Like if it comes out and it's crappy, people will just complain that it's crappy and it'll never be redeemed. If it comes out late but it's great, um, I'd, I'd rather see it done some justice. Get a heart tank here. Mm, look at that jump. Need that dash. Um, so the reason we're coming to Storm Eagle is for the helmet, again, in case you forgot. Uh, it's also because there's one section I want to show you where you get the energy tank. It's just so cool. It really sums up how much better this game is over previous Mega Mans. Um, you can see like some glass just like blow out. And there's really no reason for it. It doesn't do anything. It's just just satisfying to kill something and just watch like the control tower utterly shatter. Um, coming up to it here. I think those things would have some sort of wind attack. Be a little more. So here we go. We're gonna break in here. Get the energy tank. Check this out. Oh! If that isn't satisfying. I don't know what is. Um, and in terms of, I guess, future videos, this is only our second one, uh, we, we do have King of Dragons coming. Uh, Stacy and I did a test run, uh, just to see if we get headsets working. Um, seems like it's going well. Uh, we're headed over to Vance's place tonight to try and do some of the co-op play. Uh, just got the mic set up I mentioned before. My apartment's freaking awful uh, for sound recording. It's got hardwood floors, which are really bad, and they have carpet. So, um, we should see another video, hopefully by end of week, which would be great. I know we got our first couple of subs. Uh, shout out to Chronomatic, who was our first sub, and Vicious Paperclip, who was our second sub. Um, that's, I mean, that's more subs than we ever planned on having. <laughs> we didn't really set lofty goals there. But, um, but yeah, I figure if we can keep regular content coming. Uh, hopefully we can get a couple people we don't know personally <laughs> to watch. Um, but we're also learning a lot of stuff, so even if this totally fails, we figured out how to video edit and merge tracks and sync audios and all sorts of fancy technical things. Um, I guess anyone else who's interested in doing something like this, uh, virtual dub seems to be pretty great. Uh, you do have to have an AVI format. It doesn't support MPEG-4, but there's an easy converter that you can use as well. Um, and of course Audacity, fantastic audio recording tool. So. Highly recommend. Um, so, fighting Storm Eagle here. See how Dash helps me. Just kind of mash that right uh, shoulder button. Uh, I'm embarrassed to say when we played as kids, we never remapped our buttons. We didn't think of it. And it makes this game so much easier and so much more fun. So, don't forget that critical step. Just go to options. Just go down to dash, push R, and then you can just exit. It's that easy. Uh, it's also a nice feature that I think is still getting left out of games today, which I find... Oh shit, that was close. Um, which I find to be 
embarrassing, I guess? Like, I don't, I, I don't know, I'm not super technical, I'm not super non-technical, but, um, it, it just seems like it could ruin the experience, I mean, people have, uh, different keyboards, not everybody uses the QWERTY keyboard anymore, um, people are left-handed, seems to be something, I mean, I'm not left-handed, but I'd be probably enraged, um, just seems easy and stupid. Getting hit all over the place here. Oh, here we go. This is gonna be the end of them. And actually, that that's the ability we're gonna get. I saw that last one. It's called Tornado something. Um, also, I noticed when I was report recording some other gameplay, uh, it wasn't getting picked up. So I'm kind of surprised to see that in the in the boss fight it was, but that's okay. Um, watching the game capture over here. You get Storm Tornado! Which is not nearly as cool as the supercharged up version. Uh, and here we go! So, Flame Mammoth is the final one. This is gonna get you your blaster upgrade. At which point my review slash guide will be complete. Look at this awesome dude. Um, and, and this is what I mean, like, the little touches in this game. Uh, so, because we've defeated Chill Penguin, all of that bottom area that would be lava that I'm just dashing along right now, um, frozen. I'm gonna grab this. Okay, so here's the hardest jump in the game. And then the second hardest jump in the game right here, I'm trying to break this last block. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Come on! Yes! Uh, you may have to restart the level a few times. Uh, we get to talk to Dr. Kane again. This capsule contains a part, which will increase the capabilities of your X Buster. And I think if you don't get this, you get it later in the game automatically, but it's cool to have in advance. It looks awesome. So, Mega Man X. Those are your first three upgrades. Armor upgrades and Sting Chameleon. Um, fantastic game, well worth every penny for 50 bucks. Uh, spawned a series, future games are really hard, but uh, definitely go pick it up. 